Okay, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details Webinar. Risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. Uh, we'll go through some of the uh, website uh, and where you can find Bookmap. Uh, you get a 14-day free trial uh, of the software. It comes with education. You get access to the advanced order flow webinars, uh, as well as the Bookmap educational course and some other resources. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, uh, comments, uh, you can reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Okay, let's go to the uh, website here. We'll start at the top uh, and uh, just click on explore. Uh, there's an intro video here for those of you who are new uh, and uh, uh, just uh, watch this to get a feel for what Bookmap is, uh, and um, uh, let's just scroll down here, find out more about Bookmap. You can sign up for the webinars. This webinar, for example, uh, it will change on Friday afternoon uh, for next week. Okay, so um, the link will change, uh, and there'll be a new um, webinar series for the entire week. Okay, the um, more information here about the platform, its benefits. Uh, and then uh, there's the uh, uh, con uh, connection to the NASDAQ total view. So you can access all U.S. equities now in Bookmap. This is a real nice bonus, uh, real nice feature. Um, and th the data feed is excellent. And uh, let me know if you have any questions about that. Else we'll, we'll look at uh, some of the futures. Uh, you will need a data provider okay, to connect Bookmap to the uh, live markets. Uh, we are a software platform. Uh, we're not a data provider. Okay, so uh, you will need one of these data providers or uh, through the API for like Ninja, for example. We are a platform just like Ninja or TT XTrader Pro uh, or Interactive Brokers uh, Traders Workstation. Okay, so uh, we do connect to the API of these platforms here, uh, but just like any other platform like Ninja or TT, you will connect it to CQG, Rhythmic, you know, Gain Capital, IQ Feed, Transact, whatever it might be. Uh, but um, uh, we connect directly to them just like these platforms. Okay, pricing. Uh, let's see here. Free 14-day trial with Bookmap Basic and Advanced. 49 per month for the Basic. Uh, 99 per month for the Advanced. Uh, and then if you have special needs in your quant, you can reach out to us here. The... Um, uh, you can see here that uh, uh, the difference between the two are these add-on features. Okay, so the, uh, being able to trade right from the bookmap chart, uh, and then these proprietary indicators that we uh, developed that look at uh, specific players or imbalances or icebergs uh, in the um, uh, in the market. Okay, so um, these are the uh, proprietary indicators more geared toward the order flow. Uh, and that's the distinction between basic and advanced. Okay, if you need a data feed as well, uh, you can click here. So you can give a 14 day trial period as well as get uh, the um, uh, some uh, 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 a free trial of some data uh, through a various, uh, let's uh, click on that, uh, through various um, uh, brokers or uh, exchanges or I'm sorry data providers here okay so that's that and then uh, if you can't decide which plan is right for you well you can click here to get the complete list okay and uh, I'll just show you the differences here okay so if we scroll down um, you know you start to see the differences here between basic advanced and quant all right so it gets down more in these areas here and you, you start to see what uh, the, the advanced has and then what the quant has. Uh, and we'll just quickly go over the difference between that quant and the advanced because uh, we have had, we've had questions about that recently. Uh, connecting to your own data. Uh, any quant is going to want to be able to do that. They have own, their own data sets that um, uh, they want to study. Uh, it's very specific data sets and you're able to do that. Uh, display your proprietary indicators as well. Uh, so uh, there's that option, uh, and then uh, your um, uh, order uh, in the queue, uh, the estimation of uh, uh, your order in the queue. There's uh, that feature as well. There's some there's something um, uh, like that with Bookmap Advanced, but this is uh, a, a bit different with the um, Quant version. All right. Okay. So that's that. Um,
some of our partners here. Uh, you can always reach out to us uh, at support. Uh, you can contact us here. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, uh, at bookmap underscore pro. And um, then you can also subscribe to our YouTube page. So what's going on here on our YouTube page? Again, um, uh, if you're new, uh, I would suggest watching some of these intro videos. Uh, go through some of those. Then features and components, this would be the next step. So you want to know what's going on in Bookmap, what it's actually displaying. Uh, you can go through the Bookmap basics here. Uh, and then um, uh, some of the uh, features and, and what they are and uh, how, they, uh, uh, how they how you can work with them. Uh, order flow video snippets, this would be uh, the next step to take a look at. Uh, they go through the um, what we what we cover in detail uh, during the advanced analysis webinars. So we're starting to understand um, phenomena that Bookmap uh, uncovers uh, with uh, pretty concise videos here. Uh, they're usually just a few minutes, and um, uh, what that um, phenomena is, uh, how to um, uh, uh, notice it, take advantage of it, uh, and um, uh, yeah, the um, uh, this is the advantage that you're going to get using Bookmap is is starting to really understand how these markets trade, uh, and then to um, weave that into your trading strategies. Okay, so let's take a look at Bookmap. Actually, let's take a look at what's uh, moving here first. Uh, let's see, we're looking at uh, just looking at some higher time frame candlestick charts here, just to get an idea uh, what's going on here. Uh, we just had oil inventories, so that's moving. But uh, NASDAQ, again, I mean, we've been watching NASDAQ for a while here, uh, and it's uh, breaking a trend line uh, that you can see that would be here uh, coming down into an area. So um, uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll stick with uh, NASDAQ. I think that might be best. Um, however, I, I, there is something to show very interesting in the, um, uh, in, uh, the crude oil. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are new here, uh, I think you might get a lot of insight out of that. So let me, let me cover that quickly. All right, and uh, and then we'll look at uh, NASDAQ. Okay, so this is what I want to cover in this area here. Okay, so we had 1030, you can see 1030 here. Okay, we had the crude inventories. Uh, you can see the volatility that uh, uh, incurred uh, immediately uh, uh, at 10:30, okay, uh, and um, uh, notice that, um, and this is what I want to show, okay, w w just one very basic concept of uh, understanding liquidity, okay, what is liquidity, uh, and uh, uh, understand, you know, how it relates to volatility, okay. So let's click on this tool and we'll zoom in here. All right, so what we're showing in Bookmap, and I, don't worry, I, I know that um, uh, a, a lot of you uh, want to understand exactly what all this data is here, and I will cover it, and then maybe we'll end up again back here at Crude and and um, uh, just review this, uh, so it solidifies uh, uh, what we're uh, what we're covering here. Okay, but uh, we're um, liquidity is uh, the from the limit order book. Okay, uh, it's traders lined up. Uh, to buy and sell, okay? And they want to deal at specific price levels, okay? So look at liquidity here in crude, 487 contracts. This is huge, okay? This is in uh, in crude oil. That's uh, quite a few contracts, okay? Because we know that uh, you can you can see here on general, it's roughly in the, you know, tens. Uh, you know, sometimes you get into the hundreds, but that's pretty high liquidity in crude. Okay, it's pretty thin market. Um Compared to you know some of the stock indexes or the S and P. Uh, anyway, uh, we want to understand that. Okay. Well, and this this liquidity is uh, you can see here. This is a good example at 5480, 155 contracts. Okay. And this this white line here is bright white. Okay. Well, we're coming up to prices coming up to that area, uh, and uh, and it doesn't take uh, the liquidity here, and it and it uh, it trades on down. Okay. Um, but the market needs liquidity to trade. Okay. This is just like any auction. Okay. You, you need to have buyers and sellers, uh, in the auction. All right. So this, look at this little area here and I can pronounce this, uh, area pretty, pretty nicely. If I just bring up or bring down, okay. 
right. Okay. So look here at this little area uh, right around um, 1027. And you can see how they're pulling liquidity. Look how it got dark uh, in this area here. Okay. That is, that is the lack of liquidity. So there's no buyers, uh, uh, you know, here on the bid or there's a lot less. Okay. There are some here as you can see, and then you can see this, this guy here or these players at 5480 stayed in the book. Okay. And that's where we trade into. Uh, and actually we trade through and down into more liquidity down here, but this volatility here, well, if there's no one uh, on the bid, okay. And everyone, let's just say everybody pulls, all right. Uh, from, uh, from 55 here and they, they provide liquidity down here, uh, at, uh, 5485, something like that. Well, the next trade that takes place, if you hit um, the market sell button, the next trade is actually going to take place down here. Okay, because that's where there's someone that's bidding. So you get a lot of volatility when they start pulling liquidity. Okay, when do they pull liquidity? Well, uh, usually before um, uh, economic events. Okay, or it could be geopolitical tensions, uh, or uh, you know maybe it's just some sort of market condition where uh, traders pull back. They don't want to play in the market. They it's there's uncertainty in the market. Well, you get a lot of volatility when there's uncertainty because a lot of traders don't want to participate. And uh, that's this is a microcosm of that before this economic release. And that's why you get the volatility. Okay. And you can see once the news is, uh, it comes out, uh, players start to um, uh, digest it, understand it, and they start to come back into the market. And you can see that uh, right in this area here. I mean, you can see them starting to come back into the market. All right. So uh, anyway, that's just a, a quick note on uh, liquidity uh, and this fundamental release. Uh, but um, I don't want to uh, to go over crude. We'll, we'll uh, stick with Nasdaq. All right. Okay. So um, uh, taking a look here at the uh, at the Nasdaq. All right. So now let's define what all of this stuff is, because this might be a little overwhelming for any of you who are new here. Okay. Uh, it's actually really simple data. There's three things being displayed here uh, in this chart, uh, in the historical chart. Okay, we this is the current market over here, and I'll cover that in just a minute. On this historical chart, all we're looking at is historical best bid and offer. We're looking at the dots here, which is the traded volume on the historical best bid and offer, and then this grayscale heat map that you see, all of this uh, grayscale here is just uh, the buyers and sellers adding and pulling liquidity. Okay, that's it. Those are the three items you're looking at here. Uh, and this is a very objective, uh, simple, and transparent view of the marketplace. Uh, more uh, transparent than uh, than anything else that uh, I've witnessed uh, that uh, uh, very cleanly gives you the current and historical view of the market. All right. Uh, so uh, it's not an indicator. Uh, this is not an indicator whatsoever. Uh, it is just the market. Uh, and um, and we're displaying it here. So uh, uh, anyway, look at the absorption down here. Nice, nice absorption on the way down here. Um, and uh, you can see the reaction back up to high liquidity here. OK. So anyway, let me uh, let me digress a little bit and um, uh, let's strip away a lot of this data and let's just simplify this and we'll start with candlesticks. Okay. And I'm going to strip everything else off here. All right. And let's zoom out. Okay. So what are we looking at here in book map? We're looking at a five minute candlestick chart. Okay. Very, very uh, uh, simple. We all understand open, high, low, close of a five minute period problem with this candlestick chart is there's all sorts of data here that is not being displayed. Okay. We have no clue about microstructures in these areas. Okay. We just see the wicks and the bodies of the candles. Now you might start to read, uh, you know, some of these wicks, uh, and, um, uh, you know, traditionally what we, and, and put these together in a pattern. I mean, this, this is a, a nice little, uh, reversal pattern right here, for example. Okay. Uh, we, we, um, uh, we move to the downside. Uh, just a quick lesson or a quick review of this candlestick pattern. 
I don't know what it's called, but um, uh, this is, um, uh, we see the, the quick move down. We see that uh, uh, there's a wick here. There's some buying pressure. Okay, we see more buying pressure come in, right? But we haven't uh, really closed above here. We see more buying pressure and we actually close above these two candles, okay? This is a buy signal uh, for a lot of different candlestick pattern or for this particular setup. And it, and it, and it totally failed. Right. Well, there's all sorts of insight in here that we're just not getting. That's the problem here. Right. So let's just turn on historical best bid and offer. Okay. Now we're having we have a much uh, a better understanding of what really occurred here in structure, the microstructure. Okay. Within that five minute period of the candlestick. Right. So here's the quick move down, some sideways action. Okay. Here's a nice little double bottom. Okay. We break a little bit of that structure up here. Okay, but we are down below this structure here, right? So uh, let me just draw that in quickly. Okay, so we are down below this structure right here. Okay, and uh, we we have we have broken down below it. Okay, and um, and uh, it looks like a you know a price uh, is accepting down below this cluster of information or data here, okay? Uh, price was pretty happy up here and then something happened uh, here uh, right at uh, uh, 1054 and we see the move to the downside pretty quick, all right? And then we see that uh, we actually come back up to test where we broke from on this swing here. This is a beautiful test of that area, right to it, okay? At 62.76. All right, so now we want to understand if buyers or sellers are in control here uh, in this area. All right, this candlestick uh, is not showing us any of that. Okay, we have a sub chart here of volume, but we don't know the aggressor. We don't know what type of volume traded. We don't know where it traded uh, within uh, this area here. Um, and we want to know how much, what type, and exactly where. All right, so let's turn on the volume and uh, we're going to get our answer. Okay, well, here's the aggressive selling. Okay, the red dot is an aggressive market sell, uh, green dot is an aggressive market buy. Okay, on the historical best bid and offer. All right, we come back up, we test this area here, uh, and uh, let's, let's zoom into this area and let's get further detail. Okay. All right, well, we see nice little uh, aggressive buying here, actually pulling price up out of this structure, all right? And that was uh, kind of like the candlestick pattern, all right? And, uh, but look at the pullback here, all right? And then we come back up and we test. We don't even test back to the high here uh, at uh, the 67 uh, area, okay? And, uh, and then right, uh, right when this candlestick ended here, uh, anyone who, uh, you know, waited for that candlestick to close, they're going to be pretty, pretty trapped. Uh, you know, they're, they're buying up here right at the wrong moment. Uh, and, uh, in fact, uh, we see the sellers take control here, uh, really move price down and we get the same pattern that we're just looking at a retest to where we broke from of this microstructural area here, this cluster of volume. Okay. Here's our retest right here, all right? This is one of the patterns that we look at, uh, at the, in the uh, uh, advanced webinar uh, every day, okay? There's a couple of good examples of it today, or here, just in front of us. One is right here, okay, in the, in, in the higher time frame, right? And the other one is the, is the break here, okay? You can see another one here. You can see another one here, all right? Uh, we can even go down a little further and we can see it back down here as well. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, and then the bigger picture, five, five examples of this pattern, all right? And uh, what we want to understand, though, is who's in control, okay? Well, in a downtrend, look at the volume, okay? We see aggressive volume trading at lower lows, okay? Buying starting to come in at these areas down here. Okay, but sellers are still in control. Look at the retests back into these areas here. Okay, we're getting very little, uh, very little volume. It's exhausting out basically. 
I mean, there is some volume, so it's not complete exhaustion, but there's a lack of uh, trading activity here. So we rotate lower because the market can trade lower. It has previously traded lower. It will find sellers lower or buyers. Okay, It rotates lower, and then we actually get the trend. Okay, The trend initiates here at this point Okay, because we break below this swing. Actually, the bigger picture, the trend initiated when we broke down below here. All right? Uh, but um, uh, it continues here. All right? Now we're making a lower low. We have price discovery to the low side. And then we get another retest here. We see very little trading, and we get more price discovery to the downside. Nice little trending uh, action here. All right. All of this information is completely lost in that candlestick. Uh, we have no clue. Uh, to any of that. These are excellent uh, areas to uh, really optimize your trading. Okay. All right. This is something we cover um, in the educational course that we have available as well. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, I think uh, you, you guys will find it very helpful. Now, uh, the traded volume is uh, an important part of order flow. Okay. But it's only really half the picture. In fact, it may even be a lot less than that. Uh, all this other data about where they're lined up to, to bid an offer in this auction is missing from this chart. Okay. This is the view we're usually accustomed to, to, to seeing. Uh, is uh, all of this dark area here? Well, we don't know what's going on outside. Okay. Uh, this is where Bookmap offers something unique uh, because we take the limit order book information here. Okay, in the dome, right? This is the current market. Okay, these numbers and liquidity are always changing in the dome, the depth of market. Uh, when these numbers change, though, they're not. We don't have any historical reference of that data. Okay, what was it before? Uh, were they bidding there or offering there before? What about the other areas around it? Were they were they uh, front running it or were they uh, on the retreat? Uh, pulling liquidity uh, from these areas and adding it higher. Okay, what about on the bid? Were they being aggressive on the bid? These are all questions we want to know, and it's hard to look at these numbers and remember all of that. Okay, and where Bookmap solves that issue is with the heat map. Okay, so you can see here this is the current market as well. And let me, this is a little too much here. Uh, I did that to make a point. Um, that's a little bit better. Okay, uh, look at these areas here uh, in um, uh, this window. This is the current best bid and offer, and this number is the last traded volume, All right? Well, this heat map is a, is a graphical representation of high liquidity, okay? If it's really bright, it's high liquidity. If it's uh, uh, darker areas, well, it's less liquidity, all right? So here's 68 contracts up here. Here's 79 here because it's brighter. Uh, here's 92 down here. Right. Where this really gets interesting is we take this data and we project it onto the chart historically. Okay. As we're scrolling through, you can see. Okay. So these striations that you see here, that is the adding and pulling of liquidity at this 62.55 level. All right. So we can see that uh, they added liquidity here where it got brighter. They pulled where it got darker, and then they added again. Okay. So we're trying to we're determining. Uh, in this auction, we can see in the, the previous behavior of the players at the at these levels. Okay, this is actually uh, bullish at the moment uh, because they're bidding up. They're starting to front run this higher liquidity at 55. Now they're at 55 and a quarter. But what we want to determine, and that we're going to get our answer right now, and there it is. There is our answer. What, what we want to determine is when price comes down toward these guys. Is this real liquidity or fake? Okay, and we we can answer that right now. Okay, this was fake. A lot of it was fake at especially at this level at 55 and a quarter because they pulled. Okay, we see some transactions, you know, some aggressive selling that took place here, uh, but we can also see that they pulled that liquidity. Okay, so what was bullish? Now we have our answer. Uh, you know, no, uh, it looks like uh, 54 is really where they want to deal. Now we're coming down to test them and we're getting our answer here as well. They're pulling. Okay. Where are they pulling to? We, we can see exactly, zoom in just a little bit. Look at this area where it got darker 
And where did it get brighter? Another point below. Okay, so this this has got to be the same player. Okay, so we're now we're starting to not only identify and determine uh, if this is real or fake liquidity, but we're starting to answer questions of specific players. I mean, uh, this got to be the same uh, algo or actor uh, pulling liquidity here and adding lower. All right, this is just how these markets work. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, now we're starting to um, uh, understand uh, where, this, where these markets uh, can trade, uh, what the intent of these traders are in this auction. All right. So, um, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we like I was, uh, let's just wrap it up, uh, go back to oil. Okay. In crude here, we need liquidity to trade. Okay, and here's our before our fundamental release here, uh, inventories. Okay, well, there was no liquidity here. Okay, they pulled it all until it came down into these areas here where it found liquidity. Okay, it came right back up, and look at the guys layer in here uh, on, the, uh, on the sell side. Okay, this could be potential spoofing as well. Um, you know, we want to answer that question. Do they have the intent to trade or do, are they bullies uh, in this marketplace? Okay. Skewing the limit order book with high liquidity here, you know, showing massive supply to try to get price lower. Well, we can start to answer some of these questions by reading it. And this is what we do uh, during the uh, advanced order flow webinars. Okay. So anyway, I'll leave you with that. Uh, and uh, let's um, uh, wrap it up, and we will um, we'll catch up with you for uh, this webinar uh, tomorrow, same time. Uh, else, if you are in the advanced uh, webinar, we'll see you in just a minute. Okay? All right. Thanks, guys.